Glasswire is the ultimate firewall and network monitoring software. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Modi here, back with another video. Today we're here with the GT 1030 DDR4 Edition, a video card that really should not exist. So recently, Nvidia did a sneaky silent launch of the GT 1030 DDR4, as well as a lower cut 1050, but that for another video. And thanks to the recent price spikes in video cards, this is one of the claims why Nvidia is doing this. With Bitcoin mining and really coin mining in general being a lot more popular recently, a new card that is at an even lower price point is what NVIDIA claims is going to help the market out. But the idea of going with DDR4 being lower price than GDDR5 to help cut down on that price seemingly on paper seems good, but in the real world, which we'll get to in just a moment, is this really a bad thing? Now, before we actually get into ripping into this card, because I really don't like this thing, let's first and foremost look at it, what it actually is on paper, and take a moment to really meet the DDR4 or D4 edition of the GTX 1030, or rather, GT 1030, doesn't even earn the GTX title. So today we have the Gigabyte Low Profile 1030 D4 edition, and with the D4 obviously relating to DDR4. Now, I wanna be super clear, I don't think any of the add-in board partners are at fault. So Gigabyte, MSI, Asus, ASRock, anyone who actually makes these cards, I do not believe that they are at fault. So any of the criticisms that I do give to this card today is strictly towards the actual 1030 itself, not necessarily Gigabyte, again, or Asus or whoever makes these actual cards. Now, in terms of the spec department, we get a clock speed of 1177 megahertz as a base and 1412 megahertz on the boost. That's 75 megahertz slower on the base clock and also to 87 megahertz slower on the boost clock. Now these don't sound like major differences. I mean, I can overclock my video card a couple hundred megahertz and see better performance. But when we're comparing the lowest of the low cut video cards, even one megahertz can really make quite the difference. On top of this, the memory speed is running at 2100 megahertz, funnily enough, actually slower than the 2400 megahertz RAM running in our test bench, so that was kind of weird to see VRAM finally slower than our DRAM for once, which has been quite some time since we've seen this kind of numbers, and also too, in terms of that VRAM, we get two gigabytes of it. Thankfully, however, that two gigs of VRAM is also to the exact same as the GDDR5 edition, so it is nice to see that, hey, at least they kept the same amount of RAM there. Now, in terms of TDP, Gigabyte doesn't actually put out a claim TDP, but from taking a look at other kind of specs, similar cards, and also to the same uh, specs that NVIDIA releases, we're looking at a 20 watt TDP. That's 10 watts less than the 30 found on the GDDR5 edition card. Now, as I don't exactly own these cards, I couldn't exactly pull the cooler off to actually test this next point, but it has actually been documented that this guy actually ships with potentially multiple different cores on it, which is kind of confusing. So, both the GP108300 and also to the GP108310, which is coming in for our lower cost DDR4 options, are different SKUs of actual core processors. So what does this mean in simple terms? Well, from what some people are understanding, again, this is kind of sort of he say, unfortunately I couldn't test it for myself, but what some people are saying is actually the GT1030 DDR4 edition may actually be si shipping with two different core variants. Now, again, I haven't actually confirmed this for myself, so this could be completely wrong, and I don't know, maybe in the comment sections everyone saying that this is completely wrong, but at the time of recording, it seems to be that there may actually be two different core processors running the DDR4 edition. Now, all in all, at the end of the day, this is not going to make much of a difference in terms of the performance front, but it's kind of interesting to see that there are two different cores registered with this particular card. Now, NVIDIA claims that these two cards are based on the exact same core in terms of the DDR4 and GDDR5, but again, there's some sort of uh, misinformation going around the internet, so jury's still out on that point there. So whether they're cutting out some cores or using a completely separate set of bin uh, cards to actually make these, we're not exactly sure, so again, we'll hold off on that. That information there. Now, I definitely have a lot to say against these cards, but before we really get into what I don't like about these cards, let's get into some numbers, which will help me illustrate why I don't like this card. Now, for testing today, we're using our standard 7700K test bench with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Funnily enough, once again, running at 2400 megahertz versus the 21 megahertz, uh, 2100 megahertz rather, uh, on the video card, which has been quite some time since I've seen those low numbers there. We went ahead and set games this time to 
a medium and also to low set of settings. Now, this is kind of different from the test that we normally do here on the channel. Generally speaking, when I run video games, I run them all on max 1080p. And the reason why I do this is because if you watch a video about, say, the 1080 Ti from me, and then you watch a video about the 1060, and then also to about, say, the 1050, what I want you guys to be able to do is compare the FPS from the 1050 straight up to that 1080 and see what kind of a difference is without having to find a direct comparison there. So generally speaking, all my video card tests are done with exactly the same settings. Unfortunately, the reason why I didn't do that here today is because we could actually count the number of FPS on one hand uh, when we ran these numbers. So these video cards are just not powerful even to get any sort of meaningful numbers. I mean, we couldn't really tell the difference there. So yes, today, as I will note in some of the games, they are actually running on medium to low settings rather than our usual maximum ultra kind of 1080p presets. Do also to note, they are still running at 1080p, but they're just running at lower numbers there. But starting to jump into some of these actual numbers there, which we can see at the sort of uh, top end of the screen. We'll see what kind of settings there. And well, we start to see some of our numbers and boom, on top of that, I also too did the 1% lows. For those of you who were complaining, yes, here we go, 1% lows, whoop-de-doo, there we go. So today we do have the 1030 GDDR5 edition, which is the same gigabyte low profile edition, and comparing them side by side between the GDDR5 variant and also to the DDR4 variant, we see there's actually quite some stuff going on here. With the GT 1030 running uh, the GDDR5 edition being able to break 30 FPS on most of our tests, the DDR4 version came in at around 10, 20 or even more FPS lower than the uh, GDDR5 version. Obviously with that being said, AAA title games suffered more than other kind of games out there such as more MMO kind of games but all in all the GT 1030 DDR4 definitely did come in kind of low when it came to these types of games. Continue looking through all our tests, it seemed to be very repetitive that this uh, new video card comes in very much lower than the actual, well, GDDR5 version it is supposedly based on and it is really looking pretty terrible. And this is why this is the worst video card from Nvidia at the time of recording. Now again at the time of recording you can find one of these hunks of junks on the internet for around 86 Australian dollars. Now some might say that's actually a pretty good deal if you just want to drive a low-end 1080p monitor, maybe browse the web, occasionally jump into something really intense like Snake, you might be able to play some basic games and also to browse the internet. Makes a lot of sense for those kind of purchases. But if you want to step up to the full power GDDR5 edition, all you need to do is spend an extra $6 for the total of $92 for the GDDR5 version of that 1030, which to me is an absolute no-brainer. To put that into some perspective for you guys, Destiny 2, we found 31 FPS versus 57 FPS, a difference of 26 frames per second. And for that $6, you get 26 FPS. Another example right here, Far Cry 5, same story. We looked at 18 FPS versus 38 with a 20 FPS difference. And again, just for $6 extra on the video card. In fact, if we go ahead and create an average of the FPS increase between the DDR4 and also two GDDR5 uh, versions, we see that there is quite a big difference between the two different cards for just $6. For instance, here in Australia, you can buy two bags of Doritos for $6 or three litres of Mountain Dew for just $6. You could buy 600 megabytes of mobile data and use that up like that by watching one video for just $6 or buy one full fare train ticket here on the weekend for just $6 or you could buy forever 20 more FPS by stepping up to the full-fledged DDDR5 version of the 1030. Now yes, in all fairness, we are comparing prices at the time of recording with a specific SKU, and in general, the difference in terms of price point is gonna be a little bit more, but honestly, if you are paying, say, 10, 15, or even $20 more to get 20 FPS, it's not actually a bad deal. And just for those who are international viewers, that six Australian dollars translates to about $4.54 US dollars for 20 or more FPS in most games out there. Why the hell would you go ahead and buy anything other than that GT 1030 with the GDDR5 if you're looking at the super budget form factor? Now, obviously, if you wanna spend more money, you'll be getting more FPS, but it just doesn't make sense that you would buy that DDR4 edition. And this is really where Nvidia 
Nvidia's marketing is kind of coming into this. A lot of people like myself have made videos comparing the GTX 1030 or rather GT 1030 and showing just how capable it is for such a low price point. And this brand new GT 1030 is also too called the GT 1030. So what Nvidia may possibly be doing is using all that great SEO of the GT 1030, cutting out a bunch of performance, cutting the price by a couple dollars and selling it as the GT 1030 D4 edition. And new people who are building brand new systems who may not necessarily be super into tech might see this new GT 1030 and go, oh, it's a couple dollars cheaper than this other GT 1030. I'm gonna buy it. The only difference is, is using DDR4 versus DDR5 and they would be wrong because not only are they losing out on that VRAM performance, but also too, then they're losing out in the performance in general. And if that was not bad enough, continuing this on, Nvidia's 10 series is now made up of 12 GTX slash GT cards, as well as two Titan class of cards. They just don't have enough video cards apparently. And on top of this, they've done it again with the GTX 1050. So this is definitely something really weird coming out of Nvidia and do expect a video to come on that. And it absolutely baffles me why they even bothered. I guarantee you Nvidia and their partners have spent hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to bring this piece of crap to market from manufacturing this thing, R&D, developing drivers, even developing boxes. These boxes are really expensive to develop and they've had to develop one to bring this product to market to save $6 and for the customer to lose up upwards of 20 FPS in the test that we do have here today. If you or anyone you know is considering buying one of these cards, slap them in the face because this is something they should really spend that few extra dollars on. And if they don't have a few extra dollars, just loan it to them. They would be getting so much better performance for even five, 10, 15 or $20. It makes such a difference there. But okay, then maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh on this particular video card. Sure, it can drive a 1080p screen. Sure, it's low profile and doesn't use a lot of power and comes in at a low price point. For some people, that's really all that they're after. But ask yourself this, if your savings $10 even, and you're losing out so much performance, why would you even bother? That is definitely my question there. So TLDR time of this video. The GT 1030 DDR4 edition or D4 edition is a piece of junk that nobody should ever buy. Take a look at the average FPS difference between the D4 and then the general regular regular edition, we see that there is quite a bit of difference at well over 20 FPS difference in the games that we did test here today. Also too, in the price department, there's really not a lot separating it, especially here in Australia, again at the time of recording, definitely these uh, prices are subject to change, which may completely invalidate this argument. But for the sake of the point uh, that we do have here today, it really looks like Nvidia is trying to pull a fast one on people who may not be as well educated or informed when it comes to trying to save just a few dollars on building their brand new system. If you or someone you know is planning to build a new system with this particular card, give them a big backhand to the face, loan them $6 and let them buy the GDDR5 version because they will be seeing much better performance. Now, generally speaking at the end of these videos, if you want to go ahead and buy one of these pieces of crap, I'll usually leave them linked down below. But honestly, this is the worst value piece of junk I've ever seen so far. So I'll leave the full fledged version of the GTX 1030 GDDR5 linked down below because honestly, I don't think anyone should be buying this video card, but it'll be linked down below. Either way, with that being said, let me know down in that comment section. Do you agree with me? Do you think that no one should be buying this video card because for just a few dollars more, you could buy a way better spec version or do you think it still has some value? Let me know down below. Either way, guys, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.